welcome to you all to the Irish in the UK. This week we're coming to you from the Lord Hill Hotel Country Music Show in Shrewsbury in the beautiful county of Shropshire. We'll also be featuring Reddish Vale Golf Club in Stockport and we'll be attending a lovely birthday celebration. So sit back, relax and enjoy the show. Born and raised in Birmingham but Irish to the bone my mama came from Galway, my daddy from home. They came here to find employment back in 1964. They met up in London town down in the Gappy Moor. My daddy said he came here when he was 23. Cause he'd never find the work at home to raise a family. So many times I'd hear them talk of coming back to stay But then us kids, we started school and time just passed away Well, this is a club that's uh, taken over from the Lazy Acre Country Club. Uh, it's now called the Lord Hill Country Music Club. Um, hopefully we'll be carrying on for many, many years. We've got a full year's calendar this year and uh, moving on to next year already starting to book some of our acts. Um, we've got, uh, we've had the Indians here, we've got Eamon McCann tonight, with, uh, backed up by Mark Brown. Uh, so yeah, we've got quite a lot of good acts coming up. Um, next week, oh sorry, two weeks time, we've got Sean Cuddy, we've got yeah, quite a lot of good acts coming up. And I think one of the favorites we've got here, John McNichol. Yep. Um, a lot of people want to see, even the girls behind the bar, they love John McNichol. Oh, I think, yeah, we've uh, pretty much got a full house tonight. Uh, I think. It's down to Tony Best. He was the one that set this up and he started it all those years ago and uh, we've still got all those people coming here regularly. You know, we've been working with uh, Tony Best and with Lynn Best for many, many years and it's only in the last sort of month or so that we've taken over uh, because unfortunately you know, Tony Best passed away over a year ago now and uh, we've had to sort of like to keep it going mainly for the guys down there. Now if people wanted to come along, they can either give us a call uh, they can either get onto our website, www.lordhillcountrymusicclub.co.uk. There's a few guests uh, that turn up here that always stay for a, stay for a night. Um, but yeah, they just ring us up. We'll organise that for them as long with their ticket for the, uh, for the entertainment. Tonight, well, we've got Eamon McCann and we've got Mark Brown. Uh, Mark Brown's starting the night off, uh, does his first slot. That's about 45 minutes or so. And then a little bit of a break, moving on to uh, Eamon McCann. Eamon McCann great act over from Northern Ireland. Um, yeah, he's absolutely fantastic. And everybody's having food prior to the event? Well, most of them are having something to eat, yeah. We always provide a bit of food, uh, plenty of drinks as well. And uh, yeah, hopefully they'll all enjoy the evening, not only the food, but also the entertainment. <laughs> You've just come off stage. My goodness, what a great audience. It was great audience tonight. Yeah, very, very good. Very good. Now, you're kind of a local chap from around this, this area. I Tell am. me a little bit about yourself. Um, I'm just an hour down the road. Um, so I'm local tonight because I do travel sort of further most of the time. Um, so I've been playing locally for 35 years. I don't just do country. Um, you know, unfortunately, at one time, I, you know, country went a bit quiet for me, so yeah. I ventured out into other into other things. And but country's always been there. It was my my first first love, and it still is really. My, my grandfather was a was a violin player, and he would play, and we would dance around the kitchen, and uh, sing along. My father played the mouth organ, uh, had a great voice, but did, didn't really sing professionally or anything. And um, and they bought me guitar when I was eight, and um, I started playing and. Here we are. I play a lot, um, a lot around Bristol area, um, Cheshire, um, a lot of the clubs, a lot of the country clubs down the south, South Wales, 
Um, I do, there's quite a few of those. So, like I say, I'm, I'm, I'm back sort of on the country circuit more now than I was for quite a period of time. I could see he was a wise man, but the years were in his eyes. And though he had achieved in life, time had passed him by. He said, I've run my race here, life teaches everyone. But there's one thing I've learned too late, and I'd like to tell you son. Bothered, uptime's gone and yet to be. The pleasures of the present time sometimes we don't see. Before you know they've come and gone, and the memory's all you have. Precious times should be enjoyed, don't let them pass you by. Appreciate the good things in your life. Appreciate your family, appreciate your wife, appreciate your health and wealth and everything you have. Eamon, of course you got involved in country music and singing at a very young age. I don't remember not being involved in music. From when I was uh, knee high, my father used to play the accordion uh, in the Cayley band. And there was traditional music in our house, from I remember. People coming in every night of the weekend, so I get I get really into the whole thing of singing and uh, with like Irish traditional songs originally, and then I I got into the country stuff and I really liked that, and I loved I loved the country music. So I I, uh, I listened to the likes of George Jones and Merle Haggard and Jim Reeves, uh, Don Williams, and uh, all those guys, and they inspired me at at that time. And uh, so then I was. I was really brought up with it, and I got my first guitar yeah. um, from a singing contest. Uh, I, I won, I think it was £30 in a singing contest when I was 14, and I bought my first guitar. My mother helped me with it a bit as well. And it was an old echo guitar, and uh, it did me a long time. And uh, I remember the time I won the town contest, uh, I had to get the loan of uh, another guy's guitar. And, I'm afraid it was him. He shouldn't have given me it because I beat him in the final. That was a, that, that was good times, and myself and my brothers then, we played music and uh, throughout the country. You know, we just going around different places and playing for fun here and there, and we had a great time. And of course, in 1990, then you recorded your big hit. Yeah, the Golden Mountains. Golden Mountains. Yeah, it, it it's uh, it really went well. Um, you know, I I kept singing at home and with the guitar. I hadn't sang for a while. I'd taken three or four years out from music altogether. And then I, I kind of developed a great hunger for it again. And then I, I would go in and write the odd song and I was singing Gold in the Mountains. And I, uh, you know, started realizing that I could actually sing, hit low notes now and again and whatever. So I, I sang Gold in the Mountain and it kind of took off. And Ritz signed me up then for a four album contract and that was the time when Ritz were a huge record label to be with because uh, they had the likes of Daniel O'Donnell and just signed them up, people like that, and Mick Flavin. And that. So it was a great uh, opportunity for me. Now the song, Born in Birmingham, means an awful lot to people overseas. It's very popular here. It is. Uh, you know, I wrote that song about my aunt, my, my mother's sister, who, who moved over to Preston, actually. It, uh, it's really about her and her husband. And that's really what happened. You know, they came over here and they always intended to go back to Ireland again. Yeah. And then, uh, you know, the children grew up and, you know, different things yeah. happened and they, they couldn't get back. Mom and Dad never really 
left old Ireland Just couldn't get it out of their heads And although I spent all my life back there in Birmingham Deep inside I feel Irish as well I'm so proud to be Irish like them uh, I've recorded now it's a 12 or 14 albums to date and uh, I haven't recorded an album lately so I'm hoping to get back into the studio again and start writing again because yeah. I've recorded about 50 of my own songs so far and they've done really well for me so I'm hoping to uh, get a wee bit more out there before, uh, before it's too late. Now you're here at the Lord Hill Hotel tonight in Shrewsbury. Yeah. You're going to be playing to a big crowd. It's a sellout. Yeah. Are you looking forward to it? Um, I always look forward to it here at the Lord Hill. It's always been good to us, and um, we've been playing it now for for quite a few years with Tony Best, the late Tony Best, and we love it over here. And the people here, they're just second to none in this particular place in Shrewsbury. So. Uh, Really looking forward to tonight because we always get a great reception and it goes down well. Well, Eamon, it's been great to catch up with you. Thank you very much, Martin. We're, we're looking forward to seeing you in Manchester, maybe Birmingham or London very soon. I'm hoping, to get to, I'm hoping to get to Birmingham or Manchester as soon as possible. Now, we're going to take a very short break. Welcome back to the show. Now, Reddish Vale Golf Course near Stockport is celebrating 107 years in existence. It's got a very challenging and beautiful course, which was designed by Alistair McKenzie. And we went along to meet some of the members. Dave, can you tell me how long have you been involved here with Reddish Vale Golf Club? Uh, I've been a, a golf member for 26 years. We're an 18-hole golf course and we've currently around about 400 members. Uh, we have a ladies section of about 20 odd. The ladies, as we speak, are out playing. They, they play their comps on a Thursday and on a Sunday morning. Uh, with 25 junior members and the rest are males from about 18 upwards. Now, uh, I know you've got quite an Irish membership as well. We have. We, we, we've around about 30 um, Irish members as such. But I'd guess with at least that again, people of Irish heritage, uh, parents, grandparents, etc. Now, you're in a beautiful part here, aren't you? I mean, the scenery and the views from here. Yeah, we're very, very fortunate. A lot of golf courses tend to be big flat fields with a few trees in. Uh, the contours of, of our piece of land, it's about 100 acres, uh, is, is unique in the area. We have a river running through, we have hills, we have hollows. It's just, just a fabulous piece of land. It's a good challenge as well for golfers, isn't it? Oh, very much. We recognise as being a tough course. Uh, you've got to be on your game to, to score well here. Now, the club itself, of course, you're quite busy, aren't you? Because you've got a beautiful function room here. That's right, that's right. Uh, we do a lot of weddings, uh, christenings, holy communions, anniversaries. Most Fridays, Saturdays and Sunday afternoon, we've, we've something on. Now, tell me about, if people wanted to join Reddish Vale Golf Club, how can they do that? They just give us a ring. It would come to me or my assistant in the office and we can talk people through it. We, we, we have a vast range of memberships uh, to suit most people's lifestyle. I've been a member here at Reddish Vale for 25 years. Uh, it was the first club that I've joined and when I came and saw the course, it was fantastic. I was introduced to the club by a friend from County Fermanagh, uh, but we have about 30 odd Irish members here and they've got their sons and other family members connected. So uh, there's quite a large Irish grouping, which is, which is nice for me. Yeah, of course, there's lots of activity goes on here in the club as well. Yes, I mean, it's a very social club in terms that uh, people will mix with other players and uh, you can always try and get a game here. Uh, and a lot of the lads have a lot of uh, the practical skills or connections. So if you need something doing, there's always someone around. 
Now tell me about your handicap because I'm interested in this, how you can uh, improve on your handicap because I'm looking to get into a bit of golf. Well, I'm only 11 handicap, which isn't too bad because this is a fairly challenging course. But um, you know, the only way that you can improve golf is to be competitive and you just have to try to keep on playing, keep on working on things, which is, which is what people do. Now, Paul, you were telling me earlier on that you do a lot of travelling as well with Reddish Vale Golf Club. Oh, yes, there are any number of, uh, of away golf trips that, uh, that, that are arranged every single year, maybe two or three every single year, probably as much as between 20 and 30 people going on them. We've been to South Africa, obviously Portugal, Spain, Turkey, Ireland on a few occasions. Scotland. So yes, there's any any number of trips that are, that members are welcome to come on. Yeah. Well, that's a great way of uh, getting to know more people as well. Because when you spend a bit of time away, it's a good social uh, gathering as well, isn't it? Very much so. Very much so. And it's a very welcoming club. Um, anybody who joins here will find that they're not going to be shunned by anybody, regardless of their ability or or, or anything else for that matter. Um, yeah, so as I say, yeah, it's a very welcoming club and we're always looking, we're always looking for new members and people who want, who, who want to be part of a club rather than just come here just to play golf. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And of course, you all seem to be long time members here. How long have you been involved? 35, this is my 35th year. Wow. I don't look it though. <laughs> <laughs> so did you play uh, golf in Ireland before you I come did. over? Yes, I played, uh, I played in Dublin. I played at the Castle Golf Club in Dublin for, uh, as a junior till I was about... Um, 18 or 19 years of age. Yeah. So do you have to uh, kind of get into golf at an early age to be kind of pretty good at it or could you join, we'll say, at my age now and still play a bit of golf? Of course you could. Depend and obviously it depends on what your ambitions are. Obviously the earlier you start, the easier it is. It's a bit like riding a bike. If you learn at an early age, you'll probably never forget it. But it's time. It does take a little bit of time. Um, but golf is very much a social sport as well as just a competitive sport. So obviously, and we, we accommodate all sorts of players here, both competitive ones and those who are just quite happy just to knock the ball around as long as they're, as long as they're not t taking six or seven hours to get round. And it's an enjoyable experience for them, yeah. Well, I'm having a wonderful time here at Reddishville Golf Course, practicing my golf. But in the meantime, we're off to join Pat Conway, who is celebrating his 75th birthday party at the English Martyrs in Manchester. See you there. Pat, what a wonderful night for your 75th birthday. Have you enjoyed it? Oh, it's a brilliant night altogether. I have all my families, all my friends. What more do you want? Everybody's happy and enjoy themselves. And of course, you've got quite a few people here from Bell Mullet in County Mayo. Oh, they have. Uh, Brother Finian, and Tommy Cander, Tommy Ruddy. A lot more, about 20 altogether. Of course, you've been around Manchester for a long time. You've got lots of friends. Big crowd here tonight. And the Irish dancers and, you know, everybody was great. Oh, they were brilliant, the Irish dancers. They always come to my do. Absolutely brilliant. And they're getting better every year. Yeah. Now you've got Jimmy Smith on, uh, on the go at the moment. He's playing music at the moment. Oh, he is. He always does a good job for me. I, I booked Jimmy when he first started in Manchester years ago when I was booting bands. Of course, you've been involved in, in lots of things and lots of music down the years in Manchester. Oh, yeah. I was running the likes of St. Kindigan's, the Irish Under Cheetah Mill. I had to do all the compare and book all the bands and everything. Now, tell me, what are you doing for your birthday? Are you doing anything special? No, I'm going over to um, Vancouver. My, my other daughter's in Vancouver. And I'm going over to see her because her boyfriend is having a birthday the same day. We're having a do over there the same day. Oh, wow, that's fantastic. And, of course, you had lots of your family here as well tonight. Yeah, there's loads of them here. About 16, 17 grandkids, two daughters and two sons. A lot more friends. Very good friends.
Brother Finney, and it's great to see you here in Manchester for this very special occasion. Thank you, Martin. And it is just to be here for the occasion that I came. Uh, I live in Dublin, and uh, I've known Pat for since childhood. Uh, we were at school together uh, in Glen Castle, and um, we went our separate ways uh, just as we left primary school. So uh, in recent years, uh, Pat has reconnected, as he's a great man to make connections, and he reconnected with me um, about 10 years ago and uh, rekindled the, the uh, uh, acquaintance and, and, and uh, to know some people that I had lost track with. And tell me a little bit about your own work now in Dublin. Yes, well, when I left school, I uh, aspired to be a brother, uh, as it happens, a John of God brother, that uh, we uh, are involved in health care. And I took an interest in, in caring for people. I, I think I had learned a bit of that from my own home, where my, both my father and my mother gave some example on that. Uh, it was an era of TB uh, in, in Ireland uh, in the 50s. And I saw where my father um, befriended neighbours who were really shunned uh, because of tuberculosis. And uh, somehow I suppose I, I picked up on some of that caring um, aspect of, of our family. Now Tom, of course you're very well known here in Manchester. Well now, I'm not so sure. Not anymore anyway. How are you enjoying your stay over in, uh, in Belmullet in County Mayo now? Yeah, I, I, I love being, being back in Ireland, but I also uh, like coming back to Manchester. When I, when I get off a plane in Ringway, it's like coming home again. So Manchester is my second home, and I'm very fond of this city. Now, of course, you're a cousin of Pat's, and it's great to see you here tonight as well to celebrate his special occasion. Oh, absolutely. I'm delighted to, to see Pat looking so well for his 75 years. Uh, he's older than me, but not by very much. <laughs> but uh, he's wearing well. He's wearing well. I've known Pat a long time. I knew him from the time he made uh, little houses in the ashes in front of the fire. I came to Manchester in 1964. Pat was down in Birmingham and elsewhere. And eventually Pat came to Manchester. And uh, so we reunited again. And we've uh, kept in touch ever since then. had a great celebration with all his many friends and family and of course we wish him the very best of luck in the future. Now that brings us to the end of the show for this week. Henry McGlade is back next Thursday evening with his show at 7 o'clock and we are here with the Irish in the UK at 7.30. All on Sky Channel 192. Until then, take care.